one's self-worth. It didn't used to be this way. Ironically, back when we fought for the opportunities we now abuse, that is when we stood tallest. Out of our torturous struggle for equality morphed a mighty pride and honor. And honor. And honor. Slaves to our freedom. Now our pride is built on hollow motives and aimless ambitions. Today, to identify our oppressor, the modern black American need look no further than his own mirror. All of us aren't lost. Many of us know damn well that the emperor is butt naked. But every day we fight the good fight. But high praise for low thinking has taken its toll on generations. When so many are lost, there is enough blame to go around. When Martin Luther King Jr. prophesied the black man one day reaching the so-called promised land, he said, I might not get there with you. I might get not there with Lord you. knows he didn't think we'd end up here. Although mild with the beauty of truth and has fixed our heart on the simplicity of her charms, hold fast our fidelity unto her and forsake her not. The constancy of thy virtue shall crown thee with honor. The tongue of the sincere is rooted in heart. Hypocrisy and deceit have no place in his word. He blushed at falsehood and his founding, but in speaking the truth, he has a steady eye. He supported as a man the dignity of his character. To the art of hypocrisy, he scorn is to stoop. He is consistent with himself. He is never embarrassed. He has courage enough for truth, but to lie, he is afraid. At this time, I'd like to recite the Moorish American prayer, the source from which we draw. Our strength. Allah, the Father of the universe, the Father of love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Allah is my protector, my guide, and my salvation by night and by day through his holy prophet, Drew Ali. Amen. First off, I'd like to rise, walking in Jerusalem, just like John, giving praise to Allah, the author, the creator, the governor of the world, almighty eternal and incomprehensible. I'd like to give honor to Allah's holy and luscious prophet, Noble Jew Ali. I'd like to give honor to Prophet Noble Jew Ali because he is the only one that hooked us back up with the family of nations by telling us that we had a nationality and divine creed. Because in the book where they say, Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be longer upon the earth land which the Lord thy God, Allah, has given thee. Our father is the great God, Allah. Our mother is Mother Earth, because man derives his name from the earthland. I'd like to give on to the forerunner to the prophet, Nova Jirali, Marcus Garvey. I'd like to give on to Marcus Garvey. He had his own religion. He had his own flag. But he paved the way and told us, up, up, you mighty race, you can accomplish what you will. Moreover, he said, there's one going to come behind me. That I am not even worthy to carry his shoes. I'd like to give on to our two flags, just solely and just so, Quinter, the right of soil and the right of blood, and on to our charter that gives us the right to focus in these United States and throughout the world without molestation or ridicule of any kind. I'd like to give on to all literature pertaining to Islam in the Moorish Science Temple of America. I'd like to give on to all of those and on to all of you that have will aid and assist us 
In this, our divine and gigantic mission, the uplifting of fallen humanity, I'd like to give a special honor to Temple Two here in Portland, Way, Portland, Oregon, for their wheels and their ways. And last but not least, I'd like to give honor to our chairman, who is doing a mighty fine job, you know, of uplifting fallen humanity, teaching those things necessary to make our members better citizens. At this time, I'd like to read from the Moorish Holy Quran, <clears throat> the book of the seven seals that's talked about in Revelations. The nun was able to open from his sacred pages the messages of purity and love. Before I read it, I want to share something with our Portland listening audience. In this Moorish Quran, Noble Drew Ali put a picture. And the picture he put is this picture right here. This is the picture that Noble Drew Ali put up uh, of the, uh, the head of the holy city of Mecca. And I want to talk about that because I remember when I first got here to Portland, Oregon. And I got a good friend that I met here, Cleo Davis. And we had Cleo Davis to make a, up a lot of Moorish uh, Qurans for Temple Two. And after Cleo made up the Qurans, I put them in a box and sent them to the home office. And then when I got back from the home office, they said that my uh, Qurans was in error. It wasn't on Cleo Davis because I gave the Quran to a Moorish American to give it to Cleo, and the Moorish American gave Cleo the wrong information. Let me show you this. Did you see the picture that I just showed in our Moorish Holy Quran of the salt tan? Do you see how he's sitting? He's sitting a particular way, and his hands is a particular way. But you see this picture here? This is Noble Drew Ali sitting the exact same way that the brother, the head of the holy city of Mecca, is sitting. And the only difference in this picture and that picture is the brother that the head of the holy city of Mecca have both his hands together and Drew Ali don't. And he is telling us in this picture that when the two hands came together, that was the uniting of Asia. But what we do today You'll find brothers and sisters who join the Moor Science Temple, say you want unity in the Moor Science Temple, but you change pictures around, not knowing that Noble Jew Ali is talking. He said, what I have on, I'm talking to heads of state here, there, and everywhere. So don't change nothing that Jew Ali bought. Leave it just like that because he's talking to fallen humanity. And he's teaching us those things that will make us better citizens. So I want to read today from a good chapter in this Moorish Holy Quran, chapter 17. I talked about chapter 17 all the time because, you know, the book say, where did Jesus teach? And it say Jesus taught in India, Africa, and Europe. And in chapter 17, you see that he taught on a tiber near Rome. So, you know, this is where he was teaching that in Europe. But in this chapter today, I want to talk about two other verses. And the first verse I want to talk about is verse 43. This thing, I had this thing since 19. Mm. This thing is so old over here. Praise the Lord. But it don't have a barcode on it. <laughs> That's right. Uh, chapter 17, I'm going to read from verse 43. And verse 43 reads on this wise. And you, my brother, know full well the foes I had to meet. You know about my victories in Gethsemane, my trials in the courts of men, my death upon the cross. Now, you know in dealing with death upon the cross, no cross, no crown. In this life that we live, you're going to have to be crossed before you can get the crown because you're going to have to go through trials and tribulations and you're going to have to see some things because when the prophet talk about the higher self and the lower self, he don't say hide yourself. He said know thyself. He don't say know thyself because he don't want you to know the law of self because the law of self is an illusion and will pass away. The higher self is a law in man and will not pass away. So on all the doors of Egypt, we had written know thyself. And we're talking about your higher self because that is yourself. Because the law of self, 
is the carnal self, is the body of desires distorted by the murky ethers of the flesh. So today we're not talking about ourselves because we're going to crush one under our feet and tame the other to thy purpose. And for what purpose was the Moorish Science Temple of America founded? For the uplifting of fallen humanity. And how did the prophet begin to uplift the Moorish America? By teaching them, us, to be ourselves, our highest self. So I wanted to read that verse because we're going to go through foes and trials and tribulations in life. When you meet a Moorish American and you meet him last year, when you see him this year, he's not the same person he was last year. Because Jew Ali said through carnal thoughts and words and deeds, man tore himself away from Allah, debased himself. So you separate yourself from God in your own thinking. Through carnal thoughts, and words and deeds, man tore himself away from Allah, debased himself. Jew Ali brought us back into the foe. And how do we get back into the foe? At the top of our Quran, it said the divine instructions. On the other side, it said from the holy prophet. So that means that we too are being divinely prepared. And I'm going to show it to you right in this other verse. Let's go to verse 45. And this is me. I wanted to talk about verse 45 because this is where uh, mental slavery come in. Listen to what Jesus said. Jesus said, what I have done, all men can do. And what I am, all men shall be. Before Nova Drew Ali told me that, I thought that nobody else on this top side planet mud could even do half of what Jesus done. And this is why we was taught that way, so we wouldn't reach the strive to reach perfection. But Jesus said, man, whatever I've done, Whatever I've overcome, you could do the same thing, but not just do the same thing, you could do greater. So, and you're climbing Jacob's ladder, every round gets higher and higher. So I want to read that today because we're talking about Islamic law. We're talking about divine law. We're talking about universal law because this is what governs all events. Now, when we open up the show, we always say Islam. We don't say good morning or we don't say good night. When we greet each other, we say Islam. And when we leave each other, we say peace. We don't greet each other with uh, 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 Islamic and justice or Islamic and truth or, or, or peace and love. Jew Ali say Islam and peace. You ain't had that love. And I remember when that love first come in there, brother was liking his girl. And he'll say peace, but then he got to add that love to it. And everybody else then jumped on the love thing. Let's do it like the prophet said. He said, we greet each other in Islam and we leave each other in peace. If you do anything other than that, you are outside with the prophet said. Just like I heard a brother say the other day, and I remember the lesson. Because when Jew Ali had to disband the Supreme Grand Council, he asked the brother a question. He said, are you with me or are you with them? And this is why he disbanded the Grand Council, because he found out that he was not with him. So when we say good morning, that came through the advent of slavery. When they had a good morning of you and me, and one of their brothers asked them, how was your morning? They said, we had a good morning. I mean, he got some Bantu, he got some Eboos, and he got a lot of different other tribal members that they had during the advent of slavery. So Moorish Americans do not say good morning. We say Islam. Islam means peace. And peace means peace. Peace with humanity, peace with fellow man, moreover, peace with yourself. Now, I was looking at the news today, and I seen a brother from African descent. And his name was uh, Tola Alaki. That was his name. But whenever I hear people talk about Tola Alaki, they don't say Tola got a, a, a Muslim name or Tola has a spiritual name, they just say Tola, he must be from Africa. But if you hear somebody say, or oh, Abdullah, or Yusuf, the first thing you say is that brother got a Muslim name. 
And when you say he have a Muslim name, you take him all the way back to Arabia. You don't even look at Africa. You look at Arabia. Never have I heard a brother who hear a brother from Africa whose name is an African name never say, hey, that brother got an African name. So we know now, like we always teach, when you say that you got a Muslim name, you is illiterate. You is illiterate because there's no such thing. Before Abu Bakr, Uthman, Ali, and Prophet Muhammad got those names, they had those names before Muhammad got the revelation from the great God Allah. If that's the case, if my name is John Brown and I'm a Muslim, then John Brown is a Muslim name. There's no such thing as Muslim clothing because I asked a Muslim in Alaska to send me some clothes and he sent me a fur. I said, you sent me a fur? He said, yeah, because I got the clothes from a Muslim brother. Because I got a friend in Arabia that's a Christian, but he wear that God because that's the custom of the Arabian people. Let's worship on our own vine and fig tree. Now, there was a sister from Africa, and she was talking about polygamy. And she was saying that she was a Christian, but because of what we're going through as people, that we need to start looking at the African culture and understand why our forefather gave us polygamy. Sister, you can't even start thinking that way. You already said that you was a Christian. And Drew Ali say Christianity was found in Rome. And it was the Roman nations that founded the first church of whom crucified Jesus of Nazareth for seeking to redeem his people from under the Roman yoke and law. So you look real crazy over there in Africa talking about you a Christian because you are not worshiping under your own vine and fig tree. This is something that came about so they could crucify you and me. And Jesus was crucified for worshiping under his own vine and fig tree. So I honor what you said, sis about we need to come together with our own customs, culture, heritage, and tradition, but you got to give all that back. You got to give back to Caesar what belonged to Caesar because Caesar took it from you. He took it from me. So we have to worship under our own vine and fig tree. One more thing before we call the chairman. It's a million things. You know, when you look at pictures, when you just listen to certain perfumes or smell certain perfumes, uh, this stuff is by design, see? Because these uh, Europeans could put a picture up in a room, put some perfume smelling in a room, and they could get you to go against your nature because you're not even knowing the psychology. Do European psychology, and that's how they get you and me. So what we need to do is give all that back that's why most of our young sisters and brothers today say so they don't look at television. They might look at sports. They might look at something. But when you're talking about something else, you're not wishing under your own vine and fig tree. I'll come back with the rest later. But what I want to do right now is give you a blessing because we haven't had one in a while. We haven't heard from the chairman in a while. And he's a hard worker. One of the hardest workers I know. Yeah, other than Navi, because Navi birthday was the other day. He got one leg. And I know he was out there dancing. Right. He can't tell me he wasn't because <laughs> he's that strong. So yeah. without further ado, I'd like to call my brother and my friend, Brother A. Boston Neal, our chairman. Yeah, praise Allah. Thank you, Sheik. Uh, Islam to our Portland li listening audience and to those all over the world, here, there, and everywhere. Uh, it's good to be back. I haven't been on the broadcast for about a month or so, so uh, it's a blessing to be back uh, before you all this evening. And if you're in the sound within the sound of my voice uh, I have some things for uh, for our Portland listening audience tonight anybody who uh, makes an effort to want to listen to what I have to say but it's uh, it's a blessing to be back first of all I want to uh, again extend uh, 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 more uh, greetings to uh, our treasure brother Navi Alahi Bay who uh, celebrated birthday yes uh, on Friday and uh, everything, so I want to wish him a happy Earth Day. Also, I want to uh, also say that uh, uh, extend uh, a welcome home to uh, to our brother man, uh, 
brother W. Thompson Bay, who proclaimed his nationality on Friday. And uh, it's always a blessing when a brother or sister, you know, come back, come back to the fold. You know, like the Sheik was talking about, you know, we need to worship under our own vine and fig tree, just like, the, you know, the prophet said. But uh, before I begin tonight, I want to say uh, in the words of the prophet, he said, come all ye Asiatics of America and hear the truth about your nationality and birthrights because you are not Negroes. Learn of your forefathers' ancient and divine creed that you will learn to love instead of hate. And the purpose of the more Science Temple of America, we are trying to uplift fallen humanity. So come and link yourselves with the families of nations because we honor all the true and divine prophets. And uh, that was taken from uh, the prophet's literature. As a matter of fact, our Moorish Holy Quran. Uh, so I, I wanted to kind of just uh, camel back with the sheik on some things that he, that he was talking about, you know, because this I've, I've been giving this a lot of thought, uh, you know, ever since we encountered um, the situation that he was speaking on. And, uh, you know, the prophet said that every word I speak is spirit. And you Moors had better take heed. And, you know, my problem is uh, um, with, with, with some of the Moors, you know, even though they my brothers and sisters, but, you know, the errors of our ways, you know, can, 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 can cause great damage to the whole, the organization as a whole. And uh, being a part of this national and divine movement, you know, the Moor Science Temple of America, you know, it's important that we stay in line with the prophet because he said in his literature that he signed up to go a certain way. Now, if the prophet is, is signed up to go a certain way, then we need to get behind him because that's what he said in the Moors literature. He said, get behind me, you know, and we need to imitate the prophet in thoughts, words, and deeds, and our actions will show forth the love to Allah's law. Uh, my reading tonight is going to come from... Oh, before I take my reading, I want to go in our, because I'm always trying to teach from the prophet's literature because that's what it's supposed to be about. Uh, but uh, before I um, say this, I wanted to say uh, that when we change things, because, you know, um, in the more Science Temple of America, we are told that Prophet Noble Jali was divinely prepared by the great God Allah. Now, if he was divinely prepared and he said every word I speak is spirit, you know, and when we go back and change things that the prophet had brought to us in order for uh, us to have our earthly and divine salvation, we take away the spirit. Because like he said, every word I speak is spirit. So when we start changing the prophet's literature and everything like that, we taking away from the spirit of the message, you know, so. That's, that, that's the problem that I'm having with, with, with certain individuals. But anyway, I'm not going to dwell on that because I got something else I want to talk about. But the Quran uh, questionnaire, I'm going to come from my Quran, uh, Quran questions for Moorish children, Moorish Americans. And uh, uh, Key 38 says, uh, what is an angel? An angel is a thought of Allah manifested in human flesh. Key 39 says, what are angels used for? And the answer to that is to carry messages to the four corners of the world to all nations. And then Key 40 says, what is our prophet to us? He is an angel of Allah who was sent to bring us the everlasting gospel of Allah. And Key 41, and what is the everlasting gospel? It is a saving power that comes from Allah through our ancient fathers by his prophet. And with that, that's what uh, uh, I'm going to uh, open my measurement with this evening now i'm going to also say before i take this reading from the divine instructions from the holy prophet uh you know we need um we need to keep the teachings of the prophet noble drawly pre, uh, pure and uh we we don't need to be mixing other teachings in with it because the prophet told the Moorish children you are going to have to take these lessons and go straighten out your brothers in the east and then uh, to straighten them out, we're going to have to take the true teachings of Prophet Noble Drew Ali, uh, Allah's last prophet, and teach them just what the prophet bought us. 
and it's not right uh, 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 to mix divine truth with falsehood. You know, the Holy Quran of Mecca teaches that the man that confounds the truth, that means to mix truth and falsehood creates a terrible doom. Now, the Holy Quran of Mecca teaches that a man that tells a lie on Allah or the prophet creates a terrible doom. So, Moors, we need to be ever mindful that we doing our best to keep in line with the teachings of the Holy Prophet, Noble Drali, and this more scientific of America. Because I, I honestly say that I know we all want to, uh, our, we want our words and deeds to, to, you know, to count on the credit side of life, you know. Uh, and I was talking to, to a brother about that the other day. I said, you know, that's why I try to live a clean and moral life, you know, to the best of my ability. I'm not perfect, but I'm striving for perfection. And in this more Science Temple of America, this is what's helping me to climb that ladder up to the dome of purity and life. So my reading tonight is going to come from the Moorish Holy Quran right here. And uh, I am going to read, I think I want to kind of stay on this point here for a minute because uh, on Friday with the brother proclaiming his nationality, um, the chapter for that evening was chapter four. And uh, chapter four uh, is entitled The Death and Burial of Elizabeth, Mathino's Lessons, The Ministry of Death. And these are the divine instructions from the Holy Prophet. And I'm going to begin at verse 14. And it says, Men need a pattern for their lives. They love to follow, not to lead. The man who stands upon the corners of the paths and points the way, but does not go, is just a pointer. And a block of wood can do the same. The teacher treads the way on every span of ground. He leaves his footprints clearly cut which all can see and be assured that he, their master, went that way. Men comprehend the inner life by what they see and do. They come to Allah through ceremonies and forms. And so when they would make men know that sins are washed away by purity in life, a right symbolic may be introduced. In water wash the bodies of the people, who would turn away from sin and strive for purity in life. This rite of cleansing is a preparation rite, and they who thus are cleansed comprise the temple of purity. And I'm going to stop right there. That was um, um, chapter 4, Death and Burial of Elizabeth, Mathenos Lessons, the Ministry of Death, uh, verses 14 through 24. Uh, so I'm going to uh, talk about something that the sheik had mentioned in our Sunday school um, um, a Friday before last. And we were talking about a number of different things. And we was, uh, one of the uh, subject matters that he brought up, he was talking about nationality and what nationality meant. And um, his definition, which I agree, is, um, you know, the definition for nationality is human identification. Because without a nationality, and you cling into the names and labels that delude the slavery. Negro, black, colored, Ethiopian, Afro-American, African-American. When you do that, when you put that, when you, when you claim those names like that, you have no human identification because uh, if you don't have no human identification, you know, by way of nationality and divine creed, then, um, then you're not recognized by other nations of people. That's why the Prophet Noble Drali br uh, brought this demonstration for us so that we can be linked back in with the families of nations, you know. So we're not really striving, we're not striving for civil rights, we are striving for human rights. And because human rights are divine rights, see, that's when the preamble in the, in the, in the Declaration of Independence talking about, uh, talking about life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, and, 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 and talking about that man is uh, endowed by his creator with inalienable rights. You know, those inalienable rights are your divine rights that was given to you by your creator. 
Another thing that he was talking about, he was talking about the pillars of Islam for the Moorish Science Temple of America. And, uh, you know, in the, it, you know, with the different um, concepts of Islam out there in the world today, you know, uh, you know uh, the, uh, is, uh, the Muslims have uh, what they call the five pillars of Islam. I'm not going to go into one of, uh, I'm not going to go into any of them tonight, but I want to say that I'll just share with our Portland listening audience, you know, that our pillars of Islam for us members in the Moore Science Temple of America is our divine principles, love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice, because these are the highest divine principles known to man. Uh, but my, uh, I wanted to share this subject matter because when he mentioned this next topic, uh, you know, I, I, I went home right after Holy Day services and I looked it up, you know, because everything that we are learning, you know, in this more science temple of America ties into our history. See, and uh, so much of our history has been stolen, has been, you know, uh, locked away and things like that. So without this knowledge, we don't even know or not even aware that a lot of the historical events that took place in the building of this country was done by our forefathers and our foremothers. So the Sheik had mentioned something about the Magna Carta of 1215. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that tonight because um, one of the things that, um, that I noticed when I was doing my research on this, I wanted to find out uh, because he had did, he did bring this this up, but he didn't go into very much detail about it. But when he talked about the Magna Carta of 1215, what that was, is it was a uh, it was a charter that uh, that uh, the English used as common law, and uh, they determined that uh, this charter would allow individuals such as the barons and uh, and uh, the English colonists to uh to uh establish colonies over here in america but uh what i want to talk about tonight i'm gonna to make this quick but i i got something that i i wanted to read because i wanted to um when the sheik talked about the magna carta of two uh of twelve fifteen, uh I, I ran across some information on uh the magna carta and what result uh uh, it placed on the 13 colonies in the United States. So I'm going to read uh, some notes that I have and share that with the audience. Then we're going to get the sheet back on. Uh, so uh, in the 13 colonies in the United States, uh, the, the, Mag the Magna Carta of 1215 uh, uh, says this. And it says, when English colonists left for the New World, they brought royal charters that established the colonies. Uh, I have a lot of different uh, things in here, so I'm just going to, I'm not going to talk about them uh, in detail right now because it will be too time consuming and we, then we are on a, we are on a, a, on studio time. So I'm just going to go through and just name off what these things are. And uh, the first thing I want to name off is uh, look up the Massachusetts Bay Company uh, charter and see what that says. Because it says, for example, stated that the colonists would have and enjoy all liberties and immunities of free and, nat and natural subjects. And then they have a, uh, the Virginia Charter of 1606, which was largely drafted by Sir Edward Coke, stated that the colonists would have the same liberties, franchise, and immunities as people born in England. So uh, they have a, a, a document called the Massachusetts Body of Liberties. It contains similarities to Clause 29 of the Magna Carta when drafting it. The uh, Massachusetts General Court viewed Magna Carta as the uh, Magna Carta as the chief embodiment of English common law. The other colonies will follow their example. In, 19, in 1638, Maryland sought to recognize Magna Carta as part of the law of the province, but the request was denied by Charles. In 1687, William Penn established the uh, published the excellent privilege of liberty and property being the birthright of the freeborn subjects of England, and uh, which contained the first copy of the Magna Carta printed on American soil. Penn's comments reflected Coke's indicating a belief that Magna Carta was a fundamental law. 
uh, the colonists drew on English law books, leading them to an uh, anachronistic interpretation of the Magna Carta, uh, believing that it guaranteed trial by jury and habeas corpus. The development of parliamentary supremacy in the British Isles did not constitutionally affect the 13 colonies, which retained an adherence to English common law, but it directly affected the relationship between Britain and the colonies. When American colonists fought against Britain, they were fighting not so much for new freedom, but to preserve liberties and rights that they believed to be enshrined in the Magna Carta. In the late 18th century, the United States Constitution became the supreme law of the land, recalling the manner in which Magna Carta had come to be regarded as fundamental law. The Constitution's Fifth Amendment guarantees that no person shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, a phrase that was derived from the Magna Carta. In addition, the Constitution included a similar writ in the suspension clause, Act, uh, uh, Article 1, Section 9, the privilege of the writ of habeas corpus shall not be suspended unless when in cases of rebellion or invasion the public safety may require it. Each of these proclaim that no person may be in prison or detained without evidence that he or she committed a crime. The Ninth Amendment states that the enumeration in the Constitution of certain rights shall not be construed to deny or disparage others retained by the people. The writers of the U.S. Constitution wish to ensure that the rights they already held, such as those that they believe were provided by the Magna Carta, will be preserved unless explicitly curtailed. The United States Supreme Court has explicitly referred Laura Koch's analysis of Magna Carta as an antecedent of the Sixth Amendment right to a speedy trial. And I just wanted to say, because when the Sheik was teaching on the Magna Carta 1215 in, in our Sunday school class, you know, and I came across this, what was the, uh, um, um, what was the, the implication of the Magna Carta uh, of 1215 uh, with its use in the 13 colonies and the United States. So, you know, there's a lot of information out there. Like I said, you know, a lot of events, historical events, you know, that, that has taken place over many, many, many years, you know, uh, uh, are not even attributed or, you know, to the contribution that our ancient forefathers and foremothers uh, played in building this country. And uh, so uh, I'm going to uh, end with this. And it's been a pleasure and a blessing to be back before our Portland listening audience. Um, we meet every Friday evening at Matt Dishman Community Center, 77 Northeast Knott Street from 6 p.m. to 8, uh, 7.45 p.m. So come out if you want to hear the truth about uh, your nationality, divine creed, and birthrights. Come on out and vis visit with us. And at this time, I want to say peace. And may Allah continue to bless y'all. Here's the Sheikh Lynch Bay. Islam. Man, we got, bro, we done went through the advent of slavery and everything. We got brother here talking about the Magna Carta of 1215. You know, when this, uh, let's talk about the Magna Carta again of 1215. When this government, the United States government was first formed, it was formed under the Magna Carta. The Magna Carta is the constitution of England. When they let them prisoners out of the jails in Europe to bring them over here, they let them out of the prisons and they was under the Magna Carta. The Magna Carta was the foundation here. That's why when they fought, and uh, in 1776, when they won, they fought to break away from their mother country, which was England. And this is what they done. They broke away. So when you talk about the Magna Carta, you're talking about the Constitution of England. And we was under that Constitution until we had the war and then until we separated. You remember the, uh, uh, the Boston Tea Party? Because he mentioned Boston Tea Party. His name Boston Tea Party. <laughs> and you know, all of that had something to do. It wasn't no cheap Boston Tea Party. We was talking about gunpowder. 
So it's good that you could study that. And uh, Mo took me, and then they wanted to separate because they was talking about taxation without representation. So these are some of the things that we are teaching in Sunday school, you know, and the, and the chairman gave you a little signs of it. But uh, in the future, we will tell you about your nationality, and we're going to tell you something about your divine creed. Because I think that you ain't even ready to hear about that, only the members over there. And uh, <laughs> there was a brother by the name of Malcolm Little. And we called him Malcolm X. Mm -hmm. And Malcolm X wanted to go to the UN. And when he went to the UN, he wanted to talk to the Secretary General, whose name was Yu Thong. And he told Yu Thong, said, man, I done mentioned this a hundred times. We're beefing with the United States and we want to bring the United States before the court because we don't like what he's doing to us as a people. You thought, say, Malcolm, everybody know you and you're right. He said, but in order to bring the United States before the world court, you must represent a nation. And we already have a representative for the United States. What nation do you represent? He said, I represent the black man. I said, come on, Malcolm, you're too intelligent for that. You know, ain't no such thing as a black man. That man knew that you wasn't black when he told you that you was. He knew that you had a nationality. He knew that man derives his name from the earth land and ain't no place for black. So you thought, said, that we can't help you, Malcolm. He said, well, can I get on the agenda as an Afro-American? He said, Malcolm, Africa is a continent, a very large continent. What nation do you represent? Because you cannot get on the gender as Negro, colored, and black. Because these names was given to slaves by slaveholders in 1779 and lasted until 1865 during the time of slavery. Now, we're going to fight every year for civil rights. Mm -hmm. But Drew Ali told us that civil rights is a non-political issue. He said, civil rights is not even an issue that you could take before the United Nations. Now, we are human, and we became human when we took form and pigmentation. So if we're talking about human, then we're talking about a human experience. And if we're talking about a human experience, we're talking about a nationality. Because see, ain't but one race, and this one race is the human race. And this human race is subdivided into two formulations for identification purposes only. Mm -hmm. And those two formulations is Asiatic and European. So you're Asiatic or you're European. Everybody who call themselves white, everybody, are considered as European. Everybody else in the whole world are Asiatic. Mm -hmm. Now we know about the continental drift. Mm -hmm. We are taught about the Pangea. And we are understanding some things, too, about the Japanese, the Chinese, and the Vietnamese. And Drew Ali is talking to us about these lessons. So right here at Temple 2, we don't have time to worry about what they're doing over there because we got too much time in trying to do what the prophets say do right here. We're trying to be in this world, but we don't want to be of this world. And the things of this world shall have no rule over us. That's why you fail to realize that in the Morris Science Temple of America, we have a tools of a workshop of the mind. We have the 12-step ladder. And in order to get on each step of that ladder, you got to overcome some things. Mm -hmm. And some of the things we have to overcome is hatred, slander, lewdness, murder, theft, and every thing that harms, which are the attributes of Lucifer, Satan, devil, dragon, and the beast. And I know a lot about Lucifer, Satan, devil, dragon. How do I know? Because I've been all of them. Mm. All those attributes have been in me. And that's why Drew Ali said the highest heights are gained by those who reach the greatest depth. So once we give back to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, which is the things of the world, then we can start elevating. If you want to see your great-grandmother again, if you want to see your great-aunt again, you got to give the things up of the world because you know our people back in the day 
they were living a moral and clean life. And when they live in a moral and clean life, and we are not, we are on different ether planes. And as I said at the beginning of the meeting, through carnal thoughts and words and deeds, man tore himself away from the law. He debased himself. So we ain't going to eat our brother's flesh. We ain't going to eat our sister's flesh. The reason why that is is because we always talk about what the Moors did here and what the Moors did there. But as they're doing it today, they're overcoming. They have elevated. After the storm come the rainbow. We all have faults and failures in life. If you show me someone that don't have faults and failures in life, then I want to look at them again. Because I said before, I've been Lucifer. I've been Satan. I've been the devil, the dragon, and the beast. And you don't want me to be that no more. You want me to live love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Because you love your brothers and sisters. You tell them the truth. That they live in peace, have freedom, and justice will come to us all. When Thompson Bay got his nationality card, he said, I declare that you are a citizen of the United States of America, and I declare that you are a Muslim. He said, under the laws. But what makes you a Muslim is not how many times you bump your head on some ground or what language you speak. Because he leadeth me beside the still waters. He restored my soul, so we ain't speaking that. We in silent meditation when Jesus sat beside the floors. I'm talking about Jesus because Jesus means justice, and justice is dealing upright, equal, and fair. Right. So today I, got, I talked to a brother that started out with Skip Mahoney and the casuals in D.C. Matter of fact, he was one of the lead singers of the group. So I'm going to get off, so I won't say the prayer, and I want the chairman. Because the chairman can almost sing as good as him. Not as good as him, man, because he can sing. So I'm going to say the Moorish American prayer and let us hear our chairman sing to us for a while, because he had not done it for a while. So at this time, I'd like to recite the Moorish American prayer, our map, back to the great God, Allah. This map is what clears you of hatred, slander, lewdness, murder, theft, and everything that harm. Right now, I recite the Moshe Markham prayer. Allah, the Father of the universe, the Father of love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Allah is my protector, my guide, and my salvation. By night and by day, through his holy prophet, Drew Ali. Amen. Our chairman. Praise Allah. <clears throat> this little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, oh, this little light of mine, Muslims, I'm gonna let it shine, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, all in my home. I'm gonna let it shine, oh, all in my home, Muslims, I'm gonna let it shine, all in my home, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, everywhere I go. <laughs> I'm gonna let it shine, oh, everywhere I go, Muslims, I'm gonna let it shine, everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, Drew Ali bought it to me, and I'm going to let it shine. Oh, Drew Ali bought it to me, and I'm going to let it shine. Drew Ali done bought it to me, and I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. All in my neighborhood. I'm going to let it shine, oh, in my neighborhood, I'm going to let it shine, all in my neighborhood, I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, mm. all 
in my mind. I'm gonna let it shine. Whoa, all in my mind. Muslims, I'm gonna let it shine. All in my mind. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Just a little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, whoa, this little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, this little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. All in my thoughts. I'm gonna let it shine, whoa, all in my thoughts, Muslims, I'm gonna let it shine, all in my thoughts, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, all in my home. I'm gonna let it shine well all in my home, Muslim. I'm gonna let it shine all in my home. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Praise Allah. Praise Allah. We still got about seven minutes. You do? I can do another song. Let do another song. There's been a great change since I've been born. Sing it, Sheik. Sing it, Sheik. <laughs> uh -oh. Sing All in my thoughts, I'm going to let it shine. Whoa, all in my thoughts, Muslims. I'm gonna let it shine all in my thoughts. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, shine on, shine on. Oh, I stopped too quick, Yeah, it's all right. It's all right. You sing it, though. You got your song with it.